Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. Well, um, it's springtime now and it's time to get my summer spring boots out, the Scarpa Terra leather boots. And I realised that I'd had these for about, almost exactly three years actually. So I thought it might be a good time to give you my thoughts on them, tell you what they're good for and perhaps what they aren't. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with this video. So as I said then this boot here, the Scarpa Terra, is a leather boot made of uh, a single piece of leather uh, which is about two millimetres thick that I think and it's sort of entry level really in, in Scarpa world. Um, sits typically, or the list price of it is about £160, but you can usually get it for between sort of 130 and, and 150 And it's intended for use on uh, paths, trails, light mountain use, like grassy mountains, that sort of thing, and also city use. It's not intended for uh, heavy duty, very rocky, pathless mountains. And we'll see the reasons for that as we, we go through this video. When I first bought this boot, um, I tried several pairs on as you'd uh, sort of expect to do. And I found this boot instantly comfortable. It's uh, fit typically is, I would say, suitable for people with average to slightly narrow or slightly wide feet. If you've got very narrow or very wide feet, then you might um, struggle a little bit with this boot. But for most people, this actually is uh, designed to be quite a good fit. It fits more or less true to size. My foot size is a Euro 43, and the boots I use are Euro 44s across the board in Scarpa land, actually. Um, gives me a bit of space up the front here for going downhill and your feet swelling up a little bit in, in hot weather and such like. Um, a lot of the reason that they felt instantly comfortable was they're actually very light. Uh, when fabric boots first came out donkeys years ago, it pretty well knocked leather boots on the head for a lot of people because leather boots have a, a reputation for being heavy and uncomfortable. Um, but leather boots have moved on a lot since those days. And these boots here, I think in a size 42, are listed at 1200 and something grams, which is actually very light. Typically, the only sort of lighter leather boots that I could find were the um, Berghaus Superlight boots. And they're, as I say, they're lighter again but I had the feeling that they may be a little bit too fragile for what I wanted to use my boots for. So um, my intended use for these boots was typically for uh, walking around on the South Downs, my local kind of national park area. Uh, I also wanted to walk on mountains in the Lake District, the Brecon Beacons, places like that. And in fact, I bought these boots and three days later went straight to the Lake District for a week hill walking. And for most paths that you get in the Lake District, these boots were eminently suitable. I wouldn't necessarily be going on somewhere like Sharp Edge in these or um, some of the, uh, the more difficult routes in the lakes where the ground is extremely uneven. But for most uh, walking trails that you get up in the lakes, these boots are, are very good. Uh, certainly outside of, of winter conditions. So uh, yeah, let's have a, a little look at some of the features of the boot. First of all, we'll start with the, the sole. The sole is a, a Vibram sole, which is one I typically always look for. A um, high quality sole with reasonable wear. Uh, the lugs are, I'd say, average depth. Um, this means that their grip's reasonably good, but as I say, on very rough ground and uh, very muddy ground, then you could perhaps do with slightly deeper tread. 
and the Scarpa do make boots for those sorts of conditions and I've got a pair of Scarpa SL Actives that have a, a more aggressive tread, uh, a generally more hard wearing boot at the end of the day. The leather as I say is oiled leather, um, it's reasonably hard wearing but not super hard wearing. I did take my boots up to the Isle of Skye and probably took them on ground that was a little bit too rough for them and the leather got um, a little bit cut up. This is because the boots haven't got a, a protective rand around them and really I took them up to the Isle of Skye just because they're so comfortable I thought I'd, I'd take these boots. Um, they weren't the best boots for the job but nonetheless they got the job done and the cuts are really just cosmetic rather than uh, causing any damage to the to the boot. They have a uh, Gore-Tex liner inside them to keep you nice and dry and I've never had any leaks with them. I've walked through streams and in bogs and all that sort of thing. Never had any problem. Uh, technically I suspect that you know with a leather boot you don't really need a Gore-Tex lining and in actual fact my SL Active boots have no Gore-Tex lining and these are marketed as uh, winter level hill walking boots for places like Scotland. If you treat the leather on leather boots the Gore-Tex lining isn't really necessary. It's kind of nice to have in here but it's really a belt and braces approach. Um, in an ideal world you should be looking after these boots properly. In terms of care incidentally, um, I found because they're oiled leather, the minute you take them out of the box and go out in them anywhere dusty and such like, they seem to attract dust like a magnet and very quickly don't look like new boots. And I quite like my boots to, to look quite nice. And I was treating them and yeah, keeping on top of stuff um, functionally but cosmetically they weren't coming up as kind of shiny as I wanted them to and then I discovered that Scarpa make a, a treatment cream called HS12 cream uh, which ideally matches the leather that they use in their boots and I bought some on Amazon it was about 15 quid for a tub and I found that when I cleaned them with this they came up really nicely and um, I've actually done a video on, on how I treat these boots. I'll put the link of that in the description. One of the reasons this boot's so comfortable is because of its midsole. Um, it's got quite a thick midsole, which helps isolate the foot from rocky ground, uh, gives it a bit of cushioning, and it makes it very comfortable indeed. The insole that's inside the boot is actually fairly basic and I know um, quite a few people this is the bit that they're a little bit disappointed with when you're spending this much money on a pair of boots. For me I've not really found that an issue I think the midsole is so um, supportive that I hadn't really noticed um, but if you compare the insole to um, say the, the one that you get inside a brazier boot they've got um, a lot of padding and comfort built into them and I know some people do switch the insoles out in these boots but as I say the uh, midsole is so good that I've never actually had that as a problem. In terms of flexibility the latest incarnation of this boot and I, it was kind of tweaked a little bit I think in 2018 was made a little bit stiffer. Uh, it's still as you can see here a very flexible boot or fairly flexible boot and the torsional rigidity there's also some twist available to you here and over reasonable ground this gives you a lot of comfort the rougher the ground that you go over the stiffer you want your boot to be and that's the reason why if you're on mountains in Scotland that haven't got paths, just rough 
uh, ground to get to summits then you might find that over a long day these these boots don't give you enough support but for their intended use which is trails paths light mountain use grassy mountains that sort of thing the flexibility in the boot aids to the the comfort I use these boots typically from spring round to autumn and not in winter and the reason that I don't use them in the winter very much one is partly geared around this flexibility you haven't got the option to wear proper crampons with these boots they're simply too flexible and the crampons would uh, would come off and indeed I've discovered that not with these boots but with a similar pair donkeys years ago I've made that mistake and uh, left a crampon somewhere in a snow drift on Helvellyn somewhere uh, you can fit micro spikes to these they work very well and so that would make them suitable for uh, paths that are a little bit icy and that's a, a fairly common occurrence uh, particularly in places like the Lake District and you can fit um, Cthulhu KTS crampons on these boots and the Cthulhu crampons have a very very flexible central bar which means they flex with the flex of the boot here but it must be stressed that micro spikes and Cthulhu KTS crampons are not for severe mountain use in winter time they're for uh, gentle gradients uh, perhaps going down a path that's a little bit icy the other reason I don't use this boot in winter time is the leather's quite thin it's two millimeters thick this helps with the flexibility of this boot um, and it gives it its out-of-the-box comfort but leather that thin doesn't tend to insulate you very well so I think if you were out all day in very cold conditions then your feet might get colder than they otherwise would do. So I've told you a bit on uh, you know, what I think and what I've found with this boot. And in the shop that I work in, we sell this. It's one of our, high, although it's a lower end boot in the Scarpa range, it is one of our higher end um, boots. And a lot of our customers will ask me when they're looking at, at boots, what boots do I wear and they may come in say with a budget of £80 or, or, or £100 and they, they'll say okay they try boots on of, of that kind of level and then they say okay what, what boots do you wear then and I show them these off the shelf and offer to let them try a pair on and I would say that four times out of five their budget goes straight out the window and they buy the Scarpa Terrors even though you know they might have wanted to spend 80 to 100 pound and now suddenly they're looking at 135, 140. I would say these boots are that good they're a significant bump up on what you get for the 80 to 100 pound mark this is heavily dependent on your foot shape you can have the most expensive boots in the world if they don't fit your feet then they're a complete waste of money but if they fit your feet these boots are very very good comfy straight out the box they've started a bit of a, a love affair with Scarpa for me I've got um, a pair of the Scarpa SL Actives as you've seen and I've also got a pair of stiffer Ribolet light boots, or stiffer again, intended for use with um, C2 grade crampons. So I think if I had to pick a favourite pair of boots, it would be these. And I think provided they fit your foot, this boot here will suit what 90% of people want to do 90% of the time. And short of going, uh, you know, winter hill walking on serious ground in which you definitely shouldn't do in these boots you can get them through circumstances where maybe they're not ideal like the walk that I did on sky that, that, that cut them up so yeah highly recommended highly comfortable and on that note I shall bring this little review to an end 
and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Cheerio.